everybody, it's Sarah from Raising Taylors. I have part two of my meal prep video for you. If you haven't seen part one, go back and watch part one. I was supposed to do this on Sunday. Uh, I got really, really busy on Sunday. So it is now Monday at 1237. So I've got things set up, uh, set up at stations. This is how I do like assembly style. Uh, so I basically spent the first day prepping like the veggies and stuff like that because after that my feet are done uh but then i go ahead and just assemble it the next day so this is how this is gonna work um but before i get into that if you are my first time viewer hello and welcome my name is sarah taylor i am a wife and mother and this is how i manage it all so um i've got my list here i'll show you my list I'm going to have a lot going at once. So, well, again, if you saw the first video, I had it done in numerical order. Today, it's going to be a lot going at once because it's assembly style. So, let's get into the meal prep. Hey, okay, welcome to Sunday. Uh, so, <laughs> Sunday. Monday meal prep. Okay, so this is what everything I wanted to do on Monday. All of this will be... All of this will be done. The only thing I didn't get done on Saturday were the potatoes but there's a real easy way to do that i still may or may not do freezer french toast it depends on how much milk i have left and uh, honestly we're almost gone through the first loaf of bread so it just may not be freezer french toast this week so that's okay so i broke this down into basically two sections things that are going to be done in the oven things are going to be done in the stove top uh everything else you just put it together right so here we go. We're going to move right over here. All of those potatoes have got to be scrubbed, washed. Some are peeled, some are chopped. Some are just going to be uh, oiled, seasoned, rolled in foil, stabbed with a fork. So I will show you how I do my uh, potatoes in the oven. Those will all cook at once. Um, if you remember uh, day one, these are the peppers. You see, two days later, they're still fine. They're not gross. Uh, those That's the broccoli, spinach, and then those are the green beans, okay? So all of these are going to be stovetop items with the exception of the spinach. Spinach is getting chopped up at least half of it. it really? Okay. My son's eating lunch, guys. <laughs> um, all these stickers came off the fruit and veg I bought. Isn't that amazing? Um, so at least half this container is going to be used for spinach egg cups. Um, and those are going to be delicious. And then the other ones are going to be for my green smoothies throughout the week. Um, I already have my husband's green smoothie set aside. So we're going to see how he does with those. He's never had one before. So I didn't make a whole lot. But there's the things. So I've got spaghetti squash on the menu for myself. My husband's not a fan, but I love spaghetti squash. So I'm going to literally make my uh, vegetarian meat sauce. <laughs> it's not the vegetarian if there's meat in it. Meatless sauce. Um, so this is how I'm going to do that. I've got my tray set up for carrots. We're going to roast some carrots. Got a tray set out for the spaghetti squash. I'm going to cook this much rice. It's about a cup and a half dry, so I know how much water I need. This is how I do hard-boiled eggs. I cook them in the oven. It's so easy, guys. I saw this on uh, a show that was on Food Network. It was really good, so I love that. We're going to get some, uh, what is this called, corn? I can't think, guys. Uh, cornbread muffins. Yep. So that's the tray for the cornbread muffins. This is the tray for the egg cups. Uh, so this is mozzarella cheese. Again, I'll chop the other veggies and toss them in there as I get there. Uh, and then, yeah, that's going to be for the burrito bowls when I open those up. So that's what we're working with here. And let's go ahead and get to the first things. And that would be probably the egg cups those need to get done so here we go okay, real quick something i wanted to mention um before i had turned my oven on i went through and looked up all my oven times and uh temperatures so i am starting with the hard-boiled eggs because those were easy you put them in the tray you're good to go so for 30 minutes that they're cooking i'm going to go ahead and get the egg white cups ready and then by the time those are ready i'll have an uh, an ice bath ready to go in the sink 
because when those eggs come out of the oven, they still have to go in an ice bath to stop the cooking process. And then they could just hang out there uh, for a little bit. I'm gonna experiment and see if putting a little vinegar in the water helps the shell come off easier. So we'll see how that goes. Um, what I've also got going is I started my rice. So that's on the stovetop cooking right now. So that's set in the far back corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these things going here. So, yay, here's the container for the chopped spinach going in. So, here we are. All right, I will show you what these look like before they go in the oven, okay? Here we way, I wanted to show you, this is how I have taught my kid uh, how to teach the rest of them when they learn, start learning how to cook. But this is how I taught my daughter how to cut vegetables with like leafy greens and stuff or cutting up herbs. Get a pair of scissors and put it in a bowl. Turn the bowl as you go. Obviously I can't do that because I'm holding a, holding a camera. But it makes it real safe. Their hands aren't in front of the knife. They're on the outside of the bowl. Um, and they can see what they're doing. So in case you're trying to teach your kids how to cook, Get a pair of kitchen shears anywhere, doesn't matter what kind, and go for it. I use these also for like cutting pizza. I've used this for cutting like, uh, like I said, herbs. Um, when she was doing smoothies and she wanted to cut her banana up and she was like scared to use a knife, I let her use the butter knife till she wasn't scared, but like she felt comfortable using these and I think it was just fun for her. Um, I think she's also used these for trimming up green beans for me and cutting peppers into slices. Like after I would cut the tops off for her, she would clean the inside of it out and I would slice them in half and she would go through and cut them into strips. So kitchen shears are great learning tools for kids. I highly recommend it. So there's that. All right, now I will show you what they look like when they're assembled. So the eggs have come out. This is what they look like when they first come out of the oven. I've got my little ice bath down here in the sink ready to go. I've got beans rinsed and ready for filling in containers for burrito bowls. These are what the egg white cups look like. So I put some extra veg in there. So it's spinach and chopped up sweet bell peppers, uh, salt and pepper egg whites, and mozzarella cheese. So these are going in the oven. These are my silicone liners, if you're wondering. So I'm hoping these can be an oil-free breakfast. We'll see how these turn out. So wish me luck on that. In addition to that, the white, the rice is ready to be scooped up. So I gotta get moving. Here we go. Still at 350, by the way. All right, aren't they pretty? So here's what we've got. I was able to make four. So I've got two for me up there and then two for husband. I used the last of the salsa, so I gave it to hubby. Um, this was one can of black beans, one can of corn for all four containers. This is what one and a half cup rice uh, this is jasmine white rice will cook. I did sprinkle lemon juice over all of it, okay? That is one avocado cut in half, put right on top. If I have extra leftover like uh, shredded chicken meat on the night I do chicken for like a, a, what did I call that? I think it's like shredded chicken enchilada meat or something. I will put that right in here. And then there'll be some extra protein in there. Otherwise, this is what he'll have to go to work. Uh, and then this is what I'll have to eat. Completely good. Fine. You're still getting protein with the beans. If I was really worried about protein, I would probably do a can of garbanzo beans just in mine. My husband doesn't like it. But I could also add an addition of... Uh, like pinto beans to his as well. So he'd have pinto beans and black beans. So a really easy way to get your extra protein in. So these are done. I'm gonna put the lid on those and put them away. So, oh, by the way, that was half the juice of one lemon. It's still here on the board. And it's, I'm not doing terrible at all on cleanup. So the next thing that happens, the egg white cups are in the muffin. Oh my gosh, pregnancy brain. The egg white muffin cups are in the oven. I'm gonna line these baking trays with aluminum foil and season up these veggies so they can be ready to go. Cause I think after, yeah, 
that those are the last two items that are at 350 everything else is at 400 so let's get moving so here we are um, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these these ingredients here we're gonna do the carrots and squash first and then uh, I'll start chopping up potatoes and get that extra large tray ready but um, I've got uh, onion powder, sea salt, black pepper, granulated garlic, and olive oil. They're all basically going to get the same amount. I'll probably end up brushing the inside of the spaghetti squash with olive oil. I cut them this way because I'm not trying to preserve them as a bowl. If you want to do this, great way to not have to do dishes one night, just saying. But I'm just going to scrape all that out. So we'll bake those in there. Let's, I don't even know if those are going to fit in my oven. I might have to cut the tops off to make them fit. But this is what I've got, so uh, what else have I got? These are what the egg white muffin cups look like. Nice little cheese cap on there. I figure they're done because they didn't wobble. Like, uh, they weren't like liquidy wobble, you know? And the edges look nice and crisp, but not burnt. Cheese is not burnt, but gooey. The spinach is not burnt. So they look done to me. They've just been cooling before I touch this thing. And then the, I know these are done because the ice has melted. I did forget to put the vinegar in there, so I guess I'll try that for another day. But I'll go ahead and put those back in their now cold tray so I know that I can just grab those trays and go and keep my sink nice and available. And I'm gonna start getting some uh, pots up here. Get those ready for blanching some vegetables. So, and potatoes. But it's coming along, guys. So here is the time check. <sighs> Wish me luck. Okay, so uh, fast forward what we got going on here. I'm getting ready to saute my peppers and onions. I had half of a very large onion pulled out. I cut that in half. Okay, so I've got that quartered piece in here with the amount of peppers that I have. I've got water boiling to blanch green beans and broccoli. So that'll be ready soon. This is almost ready for me to dump. I'm just keeping an eye on it. Uh, I've got it on nice and low, so that should be okay. Always keep an eye on your garlic, guys. It could burn. These are at 400 degrees. I did have to cut the tops off of the spaghetti squash. I did use a, a silicone basting brush to get all of the olive oil on the inside. So, these are ready. There is no, there's olive oil in the pan. I see that was the paper towel from yesterday's part one. So there's that, and that just easily comes out. Goes in my trash bin. You didn't see it, but you'll, you know what a trash bin looks like. I got my wooden spoon. I'm gonna stir this up here in just a bit. Again, I've got this on low, so I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to this, um, and maybe some paprika, okay? And then, that was the other quarter of the onion. I got it chopped up and ready to go when I make some red sauce for myself. These are gonna get pulled out of their cup here, so I'll show you what those look like next. And then uh, I'm gonna line this up and get the potatoes going. So here we are, we're moving along. We're gonna probably do the cornbread muffins and the protein cookies and the bars and stuff at the very end, because. Uh, those last two items, the bars and cookies, 100% experiment, never made them before, but I'm pretty good at making cornbread. That's whip it up, throw it in there, you're fine. So, all the things, guys, all the things. So this is the container. I'm going to put the egg white cups in, so let's hope they fit. I pulled one out, and it seems like it's cooked pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and test it out and try it. I, I started to unwrap another one. And by the way, that's how they look when you don't spray them, so it's not terrible. They're really fiddly, uh, fiddly though, so I might spray them next time. But uh, I went to unwrap another one, and it wasn't quite cooked all the way. It was like the, the, the bottom wasn't done or something. So I just put it back in the oven real quick. I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, so let me try this real quick. Mmm. Yup. And it's done. It's really delicious. Dang. Hello, snack. <laughs> I'm gonna chew on this while I talk. Um, this is how I'm gonna do the potatoes. So this is gonna be the chopped up side for the reds. I'm gonna do uh, peeled 
and quartered sweet potatoes and then the baked potatoes will be wrapped individually in their own foil so let's hope i can get all of that on one tray these are lined up for the veggies to come out don't mind the dishes that's really all the dirty dishes i have so far it's pretty amazing this is ready for chopping i just move that over to my station when i'm ready i did pull the carrots out they look so good so i'm going to put those in a container in just a minute i turned the heat off for the peppers i know there's still heat coming but that's okay uh, so these are ready. They're just going to cool down a bit before I put them in their plastic. Underneath, I got the green beans boiling. I decided to boil them instead, just until they're slightly tender. And then the broccoli is steaming. So, doing that all at once. Spaghetti squash is still going. I'm thinking it's going to need longer than 30 minutes, but we're going to start it with 30 minutes at 400. So, yum snack time. Okay, so I wanted to show you what these look like when they came out the... Uh, oven this they literally just were put in here two minutes ago. They weren't sitting really long. I said oven. Oh my goodness stovetop uh, They weren't sitting too long. I just didn't want to put them in here piping hot I wanted to give them a chance to rest a second let the flavors continue to meld together get the extra flavor off the pan And now I got peppers for the week or however. I want to build and portion. It's just a container guys. It works great uh, The green beans are delicious Delicious these are hot, but as you can see I can hold them uh, I did cut one in half. They got good snap. They're not mush. A ton of water didn't fall out of it. They are unsalted, unseasoned. They're just ready to go and take on whatever flavor they're mingling with. Um, so there's that. This would be ready for the broccoli. Um, that is currently steaming and getting bright and vibrant. So I'm going to... Sorry, y'all need to see what I'm doing. See how they're getting more bright on bottom? Yeah, I need to flip those in just a minute. So there's that. Um, this is what the carrots were on. Super delicious. I was going to put these in a box, like, and have it for, like, one lunch for me. Seriously, pregnant lady's hungry. So I'm going to eat all of these as a part of my lunch. So I had that egg white cup, and I had this, and I'm probably going to sample more food. Best part about cooking. Yum. So this is my new favorite way to do carrots. As you can see, they're not, they're not mush. They still got good structure to them, but they're not so crunchy that they're going to hurt my teeth. Um... So, yeah, I will put in the description box what I seasoned these with. These are a success. This is my recipe, and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, side note, a lot of this stuff is new to me, okay? Like, I've always cooked peppers this way. I'm confident in how it tastes. So I'll put that recipe in there as well. That's also my recipe. Um, but when it's something new and I don't know how it's going to work out, like the egg white cups... I love what I did, so I'm going to go ahead and put that recipe in the description box below. But if it's something I think needs a work in progress, I'm just going to go ahead and wait to give that to you. So my 10-minute timer I put in there extra for the egg white cups just went off. As you can see, they puffed up a bit more, so there must have been a few that weren't quite done. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. Let those rest a second and see how they look. Boom. Look how delicious these look. Okay. Um, this is filling the cups up three quarters of the way with both spinach and with egg whites. And I had that cheese on top that melted real nice together. It was like maybe like a little pinch of cheese and it just spread really well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Let these continue to cool. I believe they're done. Like, if they're not done after that, seriously, they're never going to be done. But they're done. Um, so, I'm going to leave them in their silicone liners just so it's easier for my husband to travel with for work. And he'll bring those back home. Um, unfortunately, that does mean I'll have, like, a couple <laughs> of cornbread muffins that won't be in their liner. But I guess I just will have to eat those. So, oh well. <laughs> uh, this is what the broccoli is looking like. I went ahead and put a bit of pinch of salt right over the top of that. Uh, as soon as that cools down, I'll put a lid on it and put it in the fridge. So when it's uh, time to start assembling the rest of these, I can't really assemble until I get the potatoes done. I'm doing those last because they're going to take the longest. Um, seriously, these carrots are good. Uh, so the spaghetti squash, really useful tip for newbies. Um, it was really hard to cut the tops of these off, but I think it's because I got a really thick squash. So these did take, at 400 degrees, minimum 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, the longer you let it cook, the easier it is going to be to fall apart, but I've done this a lot. So these were solid on top. And I'm going to go ahead and see. Oh, I put my fork away. Well, I'm going to use my knife here that I had cut a green bean with. Uh, 
there was like a little piece right here and I just gently pressed it and it fell right through. So I know that that's done. I was able to reach in there and see I can pull, I can make the spaghetti. I know that's done. Same thing with this one. This is like the thicker part that nobody's gonna eat. That, that's what would have been left at the bottom. But you can see it's pulling away real easy. Another way to know that your spaghetti squash is done without having to touch it, because they're like rocking hot, is you look at the edges. The edges start to get uh, a little golden at the top and at the bottom, and it just it just does that. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, it just it smells really really good too. So uh, how I do this here is I have one part of my stove that I cook with, and I keep the other side open for putting hot stuff on on top of because I'm kind of limited on counter space. I usually got prep going over there for the oven stuff and things that are. Uh, for that stovetop stuff and then this is where I'm just like moving back and forth and I'll do dishes so uh, this is how I keep my line of what's on standby and getting ready to come up next to be put away and pulled apart so yes 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 this is how we are moving and going and oh my god I can't stop eating those carrots so good so good so yeah here we are um, I think what I'm going to start next is the sauce. I'm going to go ahead and get the sauce started since the squash is out. So I'm going to wash a, a pan or two and get that sauce together. I'll actually turn it on uh, in just a bit. So here we are at the potatoes. I'm going to show you how I do uh, all of these potatoes at once. Um, I went ahead and did light dishes here. So like I said, uh, I do... I try to do all this on one tray. They're all going to be at 400. I'm sure uh, certain things aren't going to be done at the same time just because they're bigger size. So I'm going to be cut up. It'll all work out. Okay. So we're going to start with uh, the potatoes here, uh, the rest of potatoes in particular. So these are the baked potatoes. So I've got five. Uh, I wash all the potatoes. Okay. And I have them sorted into their bowls according to their kind. And then I pull out uh, five sheets of aluminum foil um, and then I stab with a fork all around each potato okay I will then take some salt okay use any kind of salt you want this is almost gone so I'm gonna go ahead and use this up okay okay it's not coming out where is it going there we go okay you have to salt your potatoes, guys. There's just no getting around it. You gotta salt your potatoes. Now, you need your olive oil. Okay? You really only need a drop. There we go. That's all you need. I would then rub that in all over the potato. Now, so that I'm not picking up stuff with oily hands, what I do is I just grab it like this and set it aside. Okay? So I'll have like five of these little triangle pockets and I'll go through and work each one, roll it up, and then set it on their tray, okay? So that's how that's gonna work and then I can wash my hands one time and I didn't wanna peel these until I was ready because I didn't want them to start turning weird colors. Uh, so I will peel these, try to get them like bite size, uh, not like little kid size, at the very minimum, I'm gonna at least put this into five pieces, okay? So then those are just gonna go here. I'm gonna toss those in olive oil in this bowl and season with uh, some salt and pepper, okay? So sweet potatoes. These will then be at least quartered. Each piece will be at least quartered with skins on. And then I will toss them back in this bowl with some garlic salt and onion powder uh, salt and pepper and olive oil. Okay, so that's how this is gonna work um, These have been sitting out for a minute. I think they are ready. See how they're nicely pulling away from the sides um, They're ready to be put away in their little package right there. So there's that this is still ready and waiting for me <sighs> This is available and ready and then I can start pulling this apart I'll clean those in a minute because I'm going to use that pot to make my uh, red sauce in. And it is currently 322. So, whew, 
getting there guys i'm getting there. okay so slight change in plan uh i'm still baking everything at once those are the baked potatoes those are just going to go on a rack because they're already in their own thing right uh i'm going to put them above this tray so in case anything does leak out it'll leak out onto the tray i have one whole side with the uh quartered red potatoes that are seasoned again with olive oil salt pepper granulated garlic and granulated onion powder okay toss those by hand put them in there and then on this side it was those four sweet potatoes i kept them big and chunky because it's just gonna eat up more space in the box and I really need it to right now especially since I don't have those carrots anymore so uh, these are just tossed with olive oil salt and pepper so here they all go into the oven okay so I've got my red sauce going here I decided instead of doing two cans of tomato sauce because I thought I wouldn't have enough I thought I'd have to like pulse one up in a food processor there's plenty so I decided to go ahead and add some mushrooms to this since this is meatless so it'll have a little bit more sustainability so 100% uh, I think I can even call it a vegan uh, spaghetti so yum so what went into this, I've made this so many times, I don't measure stuff, sorry. Uh, I'll do the best I can when I write it in the description. Um, but it was one jar of like your favorite instant sauce, you know, whatever. Uh, one can of diced tomatoes with garlic, basil, and uh, I want to say oregano was in it? I can't remember, but I'll put it in the... the description half a package of mushrooms they were mini sliced bellas um there i put extra italian seasoning in here some sea salt a little black pepper i did saute the onion first remember that was a quarter of an onion and i chopped it up i sauteed that with some garlic and uh olive oil until it was translucent and then I added the diced tomatoes mixed it up did the sauce and the seasoning and uh, I did add a little extra oregano too um, oh and thyme I like putting thyme in my sauce it's really really delicious so this is gonna cook until it gets nice and nice and cooked down and married and melted together so actually I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down I just turned it down to a two because it's it's definitely hot, oops, sorry, definitely hot all the way through. I just needed to cook slowly, okay? So there's that. Um, again, these are just the only dishes I have. I'm thawing some meat right now uh, for dinner. We're gonna have, let's see. I pulled this out of the freezer this morning, but it's still pretty frozen. The spinach feta chicken sausage link. Um, we're gonna have that as part of the main protein for dinner tonight. I don't know what size we're gonna have off the top of my head. I wrote it down, but um, I'm gonna start pulling these spaghetti squash apart and loading up the containers. And I might have to take a break because my feet are just dying. So here we are. Oh, and the potatoes are still cooking. They're gonna cook for a long time. Okay, so. This is the finished product of spaghetti squash. That whole squash filled all three of these. So I get to have my my tasting and it's really yummy. I'm super happy. I had enough sauce to where I could do tasting. I sprinkled some Parmesan cheese, a little parsley. Ooh, this looks good. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So yeah, this is the spaghetti squash. I'm gonna go ahead and put lids on these and put those in the refrigerator. So that's got four lunches for me and two for husband. So that means I'm going to start pulling out the other vegetables once the potatoes come out and start making the rest of those trays. Um, not doing terrible on dishes. Like, seriously, not doing terrible. Uh, still not doing terrible. Um, yeah, it's it's... I've, I've, so I've only, this is one bag of trash so far. This is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat while I wait for these potatoes. Put my feet up for a bit and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so the potatoes finally came out like at least 35 minutes ago. So they're nice and cool now. Uh, so I've got the sweet potatoes, the roasted red potatoes. I've pulled out the broccoli. I've got the peppers and onions. I've got the green beans here, and these are still hot. 
So that's cool. So they're going to stay in their foil. I'm not pulling them out because the longer they stay in there, the more they're going to cook. So I've got five of those. While I'm doing all of this, I have my uh, chicken sausage here. It is a spinach feta blend. So that's just going to start cooking. So if it gets loud, that's why. Um, I still have corn muffins here. I really, really want to do these. I really want to do these. I want to see how I feel after doing all this. <sighs> but I'm going to go ahead and make these up and go from there. So here we are. Okay, so I'm going to show you everything I've done. This is all of the food I have made, okay? It's all healthy. Uh, as of right now, it's all vegetarian, okay? So if you wanted to follow this meal prep, you can make it vegetarian like this and not add your protein. If you're somebody who wants to add protein, but maybe you don't want to like just cook a whole bunch of it at once, you just wanna do your, cook a little bit extra the night before and then you have fresh the next morning, that's what I'm doing currently and I'll show you how that's working out in a minute. But, look at this. Look at this. This is half for me, half for my husband. Uh, the top row is mine. Okay, there we go. I've got my, let's see, that is the broccoli, sweet potatoes, couple red potatoes, green beans. I got some spaghetti squash. My burrito bowl. Now we know lemon juice does not stop an avocado from browning all that much. Now we know. Uh, another sweet potato, regular red potato, broccoli mix. Another burrito bowl mix. Another spaghetti squash mix, okay? So there's that. And now I'm down to my husband's. He's got his burrito bowl mix. Uh, some, uh, what are those called? Sweet peppers and onions with a baked potato and broccoli. Green beans, sweet potato, red potato, broccoli mix. Another sweet potato, sorry, sweet potato. Another baked potato, green bean, peppers, baked potato, peppers, broccoli, another burrito bowl. So, here's how this is going to work before I get into anything else. So, say is dinner time like this is. Okay, I'm cooking dinner. This is a mix of uh, spinach feta chicken sausage that I cooked first, took it out of its casing, mashed it up, and then, I sorry, crumbled it, cooked it, whatever you want to call it, and then I had set aside some extra of those uh, sauteed peppers and onions that I had cooked earlier. And then I had thrown in the other half of the mushroom container. That's dinner, okay? That's going to be served with these two baked potatoes I have here on the side. Now, you could eat that, like, separately, or if you're feeling extra adventurous, you can stuff these baked potatoes with that mixture. Ooh, extra good. If you're not worried about having a little extra calorie, but you love that extra flavor, sprinkle some mozzarella cheese on top of it once it's fresh and hot. It'll be so delicious. So delicious. So I highly recommend. So what I do with the extra veg, because I make enough to where I have extra veg so I have different sides, uh, but it still comes out the same kind of stuff that I made. I have extra reds and I have extra sweet potato. Okay, those are in one container. And I have made enough to where I have just a little extra green bean. Okay, those will get eaten up on off nights that we're doing something else. Okay, so over here I've got my yummy delicious egg white cups. This is again uh, a mix of egg whites, salt, pepper, uh, baby spinach, sweet bell peppers both yellow and orange and mozzarella cheese extra yum really delicious you can eat two of those and it won't ruin your day seriously love it in fact you could even do two of those cups plus a smoothie and i wanted to show you these smoothies uh missing one because we tried it out this morning when you're doing these smoothies in the glass jar what I learned is you need to pull it out the night before because the fruit likes to stick to the side of the jar. So if you pull it out the night before, it won't stick to the, dark, stick to the side of the jar. You can dump it in your high power blender or whatever blender you got. And if you're trying to do one smoothie, you need a quarter cup of yogurt. If you're trying to do two smoothies with this amount of fruit, you need a half cup of yogurt. I would start with one cup of milk, see if you like that consistency. If you needed a little, uh, well, 
if, it's, if you don't want it as thick, then just up it by half a cup. When you go up it by half a cup, that does make two smoothies, but it does make it really, really delicious. So, that's what I recommend in terms of breakfast prep. My husband had his smoothie this morning. One jar made him two smoothies. These are pint-sized jars. Again, I'll put how much I put in each jar and what each one was. I really recommend it. I like that recipe so far. So you hear dinner, you hear it cooking. I, again, still wanted to do these corn muffins. Uh, I don't think my pregnancy is going to allow me to stand any longer. <laughs> it's just not. So unfortunately, reality check. Uh, tomorrow just might be about fun and, and experimentation. Uh, I'm, I'll make cornbread muffins when I'm cooking up a protein tomorrow. That way we still have it as a side. That's nice. So I can still do it. It'll just be done with dinner tomorrow. These two are the experiment meals. <laughs> experiment snacks. And I'll have more energy to work with that tomorrow. Otherwise, everything's done. Everything is done. It's delicious. Uh, all of these are the lids of the containers I finished earlier. So i got to put those lids back on. Those are my other lids I haven't used yet. And these are all the dishes I have. This is it. This is it, guys. It wasn't terrible. Like, this this was a really great experience. I got two pans there. Two pans there and a pan there. <laughs> you know, this, is, this worked out really well for me. So, thank you so much for joining me and sticking around all the way to the end for what I think is the best thing I've ever done for meal prep. <laughs> it's a two-part video, so it was definitely a long ride, but I appreciate you taking this journey with me. If you have any questions about what I have made or cook time, please leave me a comment. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I leave as much info as I can. I hope you give this a try, and as always, have a great day, guys.